Okay, so here I just want to go over some of the mathematical motivation for the discrete logarithm. So we're going to look at a few toy examples, uh, and then we're going to look for patterns that can help us understand why the discrete logarithm is used cryptographically, um, and you know the solution that it can solve. Um, so first of all, let's look at functions. So a mathematical function. Basically for a function what we're going to do is we're going to have some input and we're going to have some output and for our function itself we get from the input to the output. So that could be like f at x. So there's a function. And we're going to look at one-way functions and two-way functions. So if I can go from the output and come back to the input, this one is going to be a two-way function. So let's look at y equals 2 to the x. And we can do a quick graph or a quick plot of y equals 2 to the x. Uh, all these are going to go through a special point, 0, 1. And so let's come along and go up, something like this. And we can say that this is 2 to the x. And if I hug the x a little bit longer before turning and go like this, we might have 3 to the x. And as I increase this value, I'm going to get like a corner. And so this one might be 100 to the x way up like this. Now, because the variable here is in the exponent, right, 2 raised to the x, this is called an exponential function. And if I were to do some examples here, let's do... Let's start with zero as an input, and then we'll just increase by one. And so then my output is going to be two raised to that number. So two to the zero is going to be one, two to the one, two squared, two cubed, two to the four as 16. Okay, so we take our inputs, which pick one is 2, we do a calculation, 2 squared, and we get our output, which is 4. That is this direction. That's one way. So it says f at 2, sorry, f at 2 equals 2 squared equals 4, which is my output. Okay, so what about going backwards? Let's pick 4 as my output. How do I go from 4 and get to 2 as the input? Well, since it's an exponential function, right, we would need to use a logarithm to solve for that exponent. Uh, now here with these powers of 2, right, we can just do a quick interpolation or a quick, you know, inspection. Uh, but for large numbers, we can't do that. So let's see how we would go about solving this. So again, if I'm starting at 4 and I want to go back and find out how to get to 2, what I need to do is solve this equation 2 to the x equals 4. And so I can take a log of both sides. Uh, and then by the properties of logarithms I get x log 2 equals log 4. And I can directly solve for x. Log of 4 over log of 2. And you can just use any calculator uh, to solve this. It doesn't matter in this case what the base is as long as it's the same. And we get x 
equals, and we get x equals 2 as our input. So using logarithms now, this is my second direction, right? So 2 squared gets me to 4. Starting with 4, I can do this equation solve, right, using logarithms, solving equation, and I can go back. So that's uh, an example of a, a two-way function. Now the other thing is that I've written up some powers of 2 here. Uh, you can do the same thing if you want to pick an intermediate number. So let's say in here we had 10, and we say, well, what is the exponent in between 3 and 4 that gets me to 10? So I know it's going to be bigger than 3, and it should be less than 4 as well. And so I can just apply my rules of logarithms to directly solve for that. Um, so just a little bit of uh, a math review on functions. And we can think of solving equations as being a two-way function. Uh, and we can think of evaluating functions as being the first direction there. Okay, next up, let's review modular arithmetic or clock arithmetic. Perhaps when you first learned it, it was called clock arithmetic. Um, and, you know, the reason comes from the clock, so let's... Have a quick clock, 12, 3, 6, 9. So on our clock, right, when we get to 12, one hour past 12 is 1. It's not 13. Right, 1, not 13. Um, and we'll say we're not using a 24 hour clock. And then when we get one hour past, 13 and we get to 14, well, we actually say that that's 2 o'clock, not 14 o'clock, right? So this is uh, modular arithmetic. Every 12 hours, uh, the, you know, the clock resets, or every 12 hours, we have to take the remainder there. So we can write this out uh, using some modulus notation. And so I can say that 13 mod 12 actually equals 1 o'clock. 14 mod 12 equals 2 o'clock, or the way to get there is you take 14 and you keep subtracting 12 until you have a remainder. So that equals 2. If we subtract another 12, we go below 0, and that doesn't help. So 15 modulus 12 is going to be 3. And we can keep going. So we're never going to see numbers bigger than 12. And we're never going to see, sorry, we're never going to see numbers bigger than 11. So let's go back one and say, well, what about 12? 12 mod 12. Now we say that it's 12 o'clock. But in modulus term, we say, what's the remainder, right? So if we were to do this division, it would be 1, 12 over 12, and then there would be no remainder. So this is actually 0. Um, and then all the numbers, 1, 2, up to 11, so if it's modulo 12, any numbers up to 12 minus 1 are just themselves. So 1 is 1 o'clock, 2 is 2 o'clock, 11 is still 11 o'clock, okay? So modular arithmetic, now I mentioned 24-hour time, that also is modular, right? Because 25 hours from now, uh, you subtract 24, you get one remainder, and you say that, well, it's just one hour ahead plus a day. Um, you also see modulo arithmetic in uh, degrees, so or like, uh, or like in radians, um, your sine and your cosine functions, they repeat every two pi radians. So they go like this, and so we would say that zero rad is the same as two pi rad. And you could go around again, right, and you get to the same position 
in these multiples, in this case, of 360 degrees. Uh, so that's maybe another example of uh, modular arithmetic. Okay, let's go back to our exponential function now, 2 to the power x, and let's do a modulo with this, and we're going to do 2 to the power x mod p, okay, and p is going to be some prime number. So in this case, I'm going to use p equal to 7, because the numbers can remain relatively small for demonstration. Um, for our clock arithmetic, we would have p equals 12, which is not prime, right? So prime, the only divisors are 1 and itself. Okay, so I'm going to start at 1, and we're going to say 2 to the power 1 equals 2 mod 7. There's no remainder here, so that is just 2. And I'm going to keep going up, so 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6. So we have 4, 8, 64, and then we're going to reduce all of these modulo 7. So 4 is less than 7, so it's just itself. 8 is 1 more than 7, so the remainder here is 1. Uh, 16, if I go 7 and then 14, I need 2 more to get to 16. 32, I can divide this, right? So 32 divided by 7, and I get 4 times 7 is 28, and the remainder is 4. And then 64 divided by 7, I get 9 times 7 is 63, and the remainder is 1. Now, if I keep going here, which I can, I can keep increasing these, but what I'm looking for here is in this column. I'm looking at these output numbers. So my function has inputs. The inputs in this case were the exponents, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm looking at these outputs, and I've got 2, 4, 1, and they come in a block. And then I've got 2, 4, 1, and they come in another block. Uh, so these are called repeated roots, and the modulus is 7 this time, so these are repeated roots modulus 7. So just make a note of that. So as repeated roots, you can think of this as kind of like a shortcut if you were trying to go backwards and reverse the function and take that second direction. So, you know, the spoiler here is that this is not going to be a good crypto system because of these repeated roots. Okay, next example, what we're going to do is we're going to take this base number 2 and we're going to increase it by 1. So we're still going to have a prime, p equals 7, but we're going to have 3 to the power x mod 7. So 3 to the 1 equals 3 mod 7. There's no remainder here. So this one comes out to be 3. I'll just write down all the rest. Okay, so writing them out in table form, just like before. So 9, 3 squared is 9, which is just 7 plus 2, so the remainder there is 2. 27 mod 7, so we do 7 times 4 is 28, so that's just over 1, or 7 times 3 is 21, and we have 6 as a remainder. Uh, 81 mod 7. So uh, 7 by 11 is 77, and the difference then between 81 and 77 is 4. So having a look at the pattern so far, it looks a bit different. 
uh, 3 to the 5 is 243, so we do 7 into 243, and let's see here. 7 times 4 is 28, remainder 5. So this is 34 and 5 sevenths. That remainder, right, that's the bit that goes here. Okay, so that one is 5. Uh, the last one, so 729 mod 7, so you can just do this on your calculator. Your calculator will have a mod button, and so type in um, 729 mod 7 equals, and we get 1. Okay, so having a look now, at this list here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six in the list. So these ones here are now called distinct roots. And the distinct roots go up to 7 minus 1 equals 6. Obviously, you're going to have more because you can make these numbers as big as you want, and you're always going to be able to fill in the remainders. So these are going to, at some point, repeat, but up to the modulo subtract 1, they're all distinct. Okay, so let's think back to our functions and what we're trying to do here. So the inputs are my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then the outputs to my function is this column of numbers here. Okay, so inputs and outputs. So a two-way function, it's going to be easy to go both ways. So let's say that I pick a number Let's say I pick 3 as my number, and I'm, this is only going to be my number, okay? So then what I'm doing is I'm solving, let's say, 3 to the 3, all right, equals 27 mod 7, which I can do pretty straightforward, and I get 6. So 3 is the input. 6 is the output, uh, but I've just said that this one, right, is my number. So the function process, it went this way, and basically I just had to calculate it, and this one is easy. Now, going in reverse, if I think about what I'm trying to do here, if I'm given 6, and I want to try to find out what number went into it, I'm trying to solve this equation 3 to the i, so that's unknown. I don't know that's 27. So it's mod 7, though, equals 6. Okay, and this one is going to the left, and this one is hard because... I'm starting with 6. I have a table here. Oh, how did I get the table? I had to calculate 3, 2, 6, 4, 5, 1. Now that's called brute forcing. I had to do the whole table in advance. Uh, or I have to go one by one and I have to say, was it 3, which meant the input was 1? No. Was it 2, which meant the input was 2? No. Was it 6? Oh, there it is. And therefore, the input was 3. But I had to go in order and do it brute force. Now, you know, if there were millions of these, that would be a tremendous amount of compu computation, uh, which is exactly how it goes. So the idea here is that we have something that's easy to calculate, very difficult to reverse, and by difficult, we, need, we mean pretty much computationally infeasible. And you do that by making the numbers uh, really, really huge. So to generalize this as an equation, there we have a to the i, some modulo, 
large prime number equals an output. I want that to be a b equals b. So a to the i mod p equals b. Uh, and what we're going to have here is p is a very large prime and a is known in advance to have this pattern of non-repeated roots. So we call these discrete roots. So this column here discrete roots, and so A equals 3 in my example is the primitive. Okay, so these numbers are known, these are public. Uh, let's be specific here, so P is a large prime. Uh, a is going to be less than P. It's also going to be bigger than 1. And I, this is, um, this is the one that I chose. So this is going to act as part of the key because I'm choosing it and I'm going to do an easy calculation. This one is the discrete log. Back to my diagram, let's do this, and let's, so here's my output, right? Here's my input, and here, this whole thing depends on there being no link. So there's no pattern to get from B to I, other than brute forcing and calculating it all to begin with. And that's how we get to a one-way function. Okay, for follow-up, let's just change the value of A, and let's go up one. Okay, I want to try a equals 4. 4 to the power 1, 4 to the power 2, 4 to the power 3. So this one is going to be 4. Keep my prime number the same. Remember, once we choose the prime number, we don't choose another one. So that's 4. Uh, then we have 16. So that's 2. 7, 14 with 2 left over. And then we have 64. So 9 times 7 is 63. So we get 1 left over. Uh, so I'm looking here at this output, and I'm looking for it to be unique, right? So far, so good. 4, 2, 1. But recall back here, we had 3, 2, 4, 1, and then they repeated. So if we do 256 mod 7, this one comes out to be 4, and straight away we know that these are repeated roots, not distinct. So therefore 4 is not a primitive root of 7. So just to wrap up some of the notations here, we've tried a few different numbers and we've actually found um, that the primitive roots of 7, so the primitive roots of our prime number 7 are, and so we found 3, if I did one more, I would find that 5 also is in the set of primitive roots. So we've got 2 there for 7, uh, and just for comparison here, another prime number, 19, there's a few more prim primitive roots, so we have 2, 3, 10, 13, 14, 15. Uh, you may have thought that we couldn't have a prime number, or that we had to have a prime number be a primitive root, right? 3, 5, 2, and 3 match, but 10 doesn't. So I'll leave it there for the discrete log problem. We're looking for a function that's easy to compute one way, and so these are easy. We can just use our calculator to run them and very low computation. 
but difficult to reverse, and so that's what the discrete log provides. We need, in advance, to pre-compute this whole table for very large numbers in order to be able to find like a shortcut or have an efficient method of reversing it. And the discrete logarithm is uh, the key for the Diffie-Hellman key exchange, which I believe is coming up next.